station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. I have a very close friend that didn't make it today. And I have another close friend who didn't either. Now at 6 on DC News Now, heartbreak in Louisville. Kentucky's governor reacting to the 15th mass killing in the U.S. this year. And a settlement worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. We are live with the reimbursement for season ticket holders who never got their deposit back. And it would be tough to find more sunshine than what we got today. It was downright beautiful. Does this trend continue for the rest of the week? We'll have a check of that forecast here in just a bit. It keeps us out of trouble. Over there. And the district is spanning hours at some rec centers. How DC officials hope it'll keep our children safe. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for DC News Now at 6 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan. And I'm Thasmeen Mafus, and we start tonight with developing news out of Louisville, Kentucky. Police say a 23-year-old man armed with a rifle shot and killed four people at his workplace. The Metro Police Chief there says the shooter was killed by police during the attack. He also says the shooter live streamed during that shooting. Democratic Governor Andy Beshear says two of his close friends died and a third friend is in the hospital with injuries. So when we talk about praying, I hope people will. For those that we are hoping can make it through the surgeries that they're going through and to everybody who needs it, don't be afraid to get some help. Our bodies and our minds are not meant to go through these types of tragedies. At least nine people were wounded in that attack, including a police officer who just graduated from the academy on March 31st. This is the 15th mass killing in the U.S. so far this year. And meanwhile, President Biden released a statement saying, quote, once again, our nation mourns after a senseless act of gun violence. Jill and I pray for the lives lost and impacted by today's shooting. Too many Americans are paying for the price of inaction with their lives. When will Republicans in Congress act to protect our communities? All right, an update tonight. Former Washington commander, season ticket holders who felt cheated by the team are now being reimbursed. Yeah, D.C. Attorney General Brian Schwab said today that $200,000 is going back to fans who decided to get rid of their tickets. Our political and government reporter Leonard and Fleming joins us live in DuPont Circle with the reaction from the AG and fans. And Leonard, good evening. This is certainly welcome news to a lot of commanders fans. That's exactly right. Good evening. This is the settlement agreement between the Washington commanders and the AG's office. So those ticket holders who did not get their money back now will. This is a important case because the uh, Washington football team uh, was taking advantage of the D.C. residents, its fan base. That's why D.C.'s attorney general sued the Washington commanders and forced a settlement announced today. Now $200,000 will be returned to season ticket holders who didn't get their money back when they canceled their season tickets dating all the way back to 2009. The city, uh, in the course of its investigation, learned that the team knowingly was misusing these security deposits, knowingly not returning them to the fans to whom they were entitled. The AG investigation was sparked after the team was brought before the U.S. House Oversight Committee. I don't know that we know if there was a legitimate basis for holding them. In fact, uh, the agreements were clear. The law was clear that at consumers, when they make security deposits, are entitled to have them returned. Commander's fan Daryl Hayden Jr. is pleased to hear of the settlement. A uh, well, win for the little people, man, I guess. Uh, it's sad, man, that he had to be forced to do the right thing. Robert Jones, another fan, wasn't surprised that Snyder had to be forced to give the money back. I think it's an absolute travesty that an owner would do that to the football fan base. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. A.G. Schwab says he expects the team to comply with the decision. My hope is that the team and its leadership and its management will make sure that it complies with all laws, that it protects and um, treats its fans and its consumers with respect. I'm glad he's selling the team, to be honest. I'm glad he's going. The D.C. DC Attorney General's office still has an ongoing lawsuit against the commanders and the NFL for what it terms its toxic workplace environment. Meanwhile, while the commanders admit to no wrongdoing, the, the AG's office required the commanders to pay $425,000 
as restitution and attorney fees. Reporting live from DuPont Circle, Leonard and Fleming, DC News Now, back to you. Leonard, thank you. And developing now more Commander's News, a family of former quarterback Dwayne Haskins has filed a lawsuit one year after his death. Now, the lawsuit alleges he was possibly robbed and blackmailed. Our sports director, Derek Forrest, joining us live here with his new information. Yeah, and Derek, disturbing details. Yes, certainly. Uh, uh, and ironically enough, it was one year ago Sunday when former Washington quarterback Dwayne Haskins died after being hit by a dump truck while he was walking on a highway in Florida. The toxicology report on the night showed Haskins was legally drunk and had drugs in his system. However, in a lawsuit filed by his family a month ago, it states they believe he was drugged on the night of his death as part of an alleged blackmail and robbery conspiracy. In the statement released Monday by an attorney representing Haskins family, it also says this is an important step in the process of uncovering the complete truth about his tragedy. And of course, we'll learn more about the lawsuit as time comes. According to the report, Haskins' wife is uh, named as the plaintiff on the civil case and no charge has been filed, guys. All right, Derek, thank you. I'm switching gears now to weather. Clear skies, sunny day. What a beautiful way to start the week. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> Best part about it, David, right? The exactly. whole week's going to be like this, right? That's right. This is going to be a beautiful week of weather. All that sunshine matching our colors. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Tonight we are trying to get in the spirit. And here you go. Those high temperatures from today reaching up into the 60s. All of that sunshine, that allowed us to really bump up those temperatures. 64 officially in D.C. A little bit warmer as you go inland, northern Virginia, Manassas, Leesburg there at 66 degrees. So yesterday, no doubt, was a beautiful Easter Sunday, especially by the afternoon. But today, we just continue to add on to that. And this trend, oh yes, it is going to continue as we move ahead into the rest of this week. And part of the reason for that being the case, high pressure. It's hanging out right nearby. It's directly over Richmond, southeastern Virginia at this hour, and it's not going much of anywhere as we move along here these next few days. So there you have it. Very clear skies. Now, as that sun sets, it is going to cool off. It's going to drop back down into the 40s. You might feel a little bit of a briskness to the air out there, but as we go along, how much warmer are we expecting temperatures to get this week? We'll have a full check of that forecast here in just a bit. Damn it, thanks. An update tonight. We now know the name of the man who was shot to death in Prince George's County over the weekend. Police say 20 year old Kadane Fletcher of Laurel was killed. Another man is in critical condition tonight. The shooting happened around 430 Sunday afternoon on the 13,000 block of Edinburgh Lane in Laurel. Neighbors tell us they heard more than a dozen shots. Prince George's County Police is offering a $25,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest. And developing now in the district, more D.C. recreation centers have expanded their hours. And yeah, so this comes as a lot of D.C. public school students prepare for spring break. Turkey Thicket was one of the first rec centers to expand their hours last month. And part of Mayor Mural Bowser's efforts to give teens more things to do during the summer. Yeah, that's where we find our Dave Laval tonight. And Dave, nearly two dozen rec centers will now keep their doors open a bit longer. Well, Chris Tussmeen, this center is pretty much located across the street from where 13 year old Karan Blake was shot and killed about three months ago. Well, now more recreation centers like this one are staying open longer as a way to get kids off the streets and out of trouble. Tariq Boney works on his game at Turkey Thicket Recreation Center. The player at St. John's High School wants to play in college. He credits part of his success to the rec center. Here it helped me keep my head straight and definitely drive to where I am now. The building expanded its hours back on March 27th, one of eight around the district to do so. The Fort Stanton Recreation Center followed suit Monday. It's among 22 more to do so. This is the first time the D.C. Department of Parks and Recreation has expanded the hours at these buildings. Its director says the goal is to give young people a safe place to go and avoid trouble. We think about our childhood, we can remember that safe, special place for us. And for many of us, especially D.C. youth, it has been the recreation centers. It keeps us out of 
Aaron Carew and friends enjoy some friendly competition at Turkey Thicket. They've enjoyed the extended hours at the rec center and believe the other buildings will have similar success staying open longer. We get to meet our friends and stuff. You know, we just enjoy the moment and doing something that's healthy for, you know, us. Even though you have to walk some places, you can meet up with your fellow kids, people who care about you. Uh, there's aid, there's counseling here. It's very important. April 24th is when the April 24th is when the final 15 of the district's 45 rec centers will expand their hours. We're live in the Brooklyn neighborhood. Dave Laval, DC News Now. And a Virginia mother of the six-year-old child who shot his teacher has been indicted by a grand jury. The mother is charged with felony child neglect and misdemeanor negligence after the child brought a gun to Richneck Elementary School. And teacher Abby Zorner is also suing the school board for negligence after multiple warnings about the child and the gun were both ignored.